Welcome to this overview of how to use library databases. First, let's briefly cover why you might want to use a library database and what it is. In the course of your academic and professional work, you'll find yourself needing more specialized information than what you may find in general web searches or on social networks. This is a good time to consult a database, which is a collection of content appearing in a range of media formats and publication types, including professional and academic publications, which are really important for you to know about for your technical writing course and for your future career. Libraries provide access to these databases and crucially give you access to content that you might otherwise have to pay for if you were to find it with a general web search. So now let's do a basic overview of how to use the library databases. On the library's homepage, which you can get to from any COCC page by clicking on library across the top menu, you're going to click on the all databases button. This will bring you to a list of all of the databases we have, which is quite a few. A good starting point is either Academic One File or Academic Search Premier, which are highlighted as popular on the right side of the page. I'm going to use Academic Search Premier for this demo, but know that most systems work the same way with only slight differences in design and wording. If you're off campus, you'll be asked to log in before seeing this page. And now we're gonna enter our search terms. A word about search terms. For library search systems, it's best not to enter your entire question or thought. Instead, enter specific targeted keywords, just the few words that best capture your topic. So let's say that I'm interested in a career in engineering, and I want to know what communication resources and skills I'll need to make the transition from being a college student to a professional working in the field. That's quite a lot of words to describe my query, so I'm going to boil it down to just a few keywords. Engineering. Professional communication. And students. The process of getting the right keywords to describe your question can take some trial and error, so don't feel bad if it takes a few attempts. That's perfectly normal. Now that I've done my search, I have 197 results, and that's probably a few more than I really want to page through one at a time. So I'm going to apply some filters to continue narrowing down my search to get more relevant results. In this system, my filters are on the left side of the screen, but remember, in other systems, they may be in other places. Just depends on the system you're using. The filters I use most frequently are the date filters. Let's say I only want things from the last five years. Another one I use a lot is the peer-reviewed filter. This is important for um, academic assignments, but also for professional duties that may require you to find credible, validated research. Those are the two filters I use the most frequently, but there are other filters that you can play around with. Another one that I use sometimes is language, and I'm gonna select just English because that's all I read. Notice how I can see my applied filters here on the left, and I can see that I've reduced my search results by quite a few from 197 to 61. When I see a title that looks interesting to me, I can click on it, and in most cases, this will bring me to a screen with more detail and a paragraph or two called an abstract. Abstract is just a technical term for summary. Also, don't worry if you don't understand all of the language or acronyms that might appear in an abstract. Professional and academic articles are written primarily for experts in the field. The more you learn about a topic and or work in a field, the more familiar the terminology will get. The full article will also explain terms in far more detail than the summary does. You'll also notice that some results say request full text, while others show links to the full text on the screen. Request full text means that the library doesn't have immediate access. Click on the link to fill out a quick request form. I'm so quick because it's mostly filled in for me and click Submit Request. The article will be delivered to you in 48 hours or less, usually much less. I often get requested articles the same day. Best part, it's free. 
If you see full text links, that means you can get to the full text of the article immediately. If you're really limited on time, you can always filter to full text results only. If you find a result that you want to use in your research, make sure that you can get back to it later. A great way to do this is to email it to yourself. Click on the email button and enter your email address. You'll notice that it's gonna send me the PDF as a separate attachment. Most of the library tools also provide an easy way to create a citation for your source, which you'll also wanna keep track of for assignments or professional projects, because it's important to give credit where credit is due always. Click on the Cite button and scroll through the available formats until you find the one you need. For academic purposes, this will most likely be APA or MLA, but depending on the field you work in, you may need a different one. Remember to double check the citation before using it in your paper because you're ultimately responsible for the accuracy of your citations. In addition to Academic Search Premier, the library subscribes to many subject-specific databases. Depending on your topic, these may be more appropriate. Find these by clicking on Resources on the library's homepage, then Resources by Subject. Choose the subject closest to your topic to see if we have specialized databases and content for that topic. That's the very quick intro into using the library databases. Remember, if you have questions, we're here to help. Reach out to me directly or contact the library where staff are available to answer your questions in person, by phone, email, or chat.